So today we're going to present brand testing on ping pong balls. All right. So for this uh, study, our objective was to determine if there is a relationship between the brand of ping pong ball and the distance that the ball travels. Um, so the question that we ask here is like, does the brand of ping pong ball affect the flight trajectory or the final distance that the balls will go? And that's what we're going to be testing. So to give some background on this experiment, the flight path of a ping pong ball is mainly dictated by basic projectile motion equations. There's acceleration in the y direction because of gravity, but there is no acceleration in the x direction. And there is possible confounding variables here, such as air resistance and the Magnus effect. Um, so the ping pong balls have three types of ratings. They have one star, two star, and three star ratings. We did not take these ratings into account for the experiment because the rating of a ping pong ball has more to do with its durability than it does how it travels through the air. And this experiment was simply testing the brands of the balls and not their levels. So as far as factors and levels are concerned, this experiment was a single factor design. And we used a one-way ANOVA test to test all the different levels. And those levels, all six of them, were simply the brands of the ping pong balls. So in order from one to six, we have Nataku, Franklin Sports, Steiga, Maple, Kevin's, and Butterfly. So our null hypothesis was the brand of ping pong ball will have no effect on distance traveled. And the alternative hypothesis was that there will be a relationship between distance traveled and brand. So our experimental process went like this. We had a launcher, which was held horizontally 41 inches above the ground. And a string, a string was attached to the spring mechanism, which was pulled back a set length. Before releasing the string, the ball was pushed back until it touched the spring. Lastly, once the ball was released, the data collector observed where the ball land on the measuring tape, which was held on the ground. This is all of the raw data we calculated from our different trials. So as you can see, we were testing those six different brands of ping pong balls. And for each brand, we measured the weight of the ball and then did the trial 10 different times to see the distance traveled in inches. Uh, here's a graph between the mean distance traveled and the uh, and each of the different brands. On the left side, it's uh, on the left side it's inches, and on the bottom it's each of the different brands one through six, same as ordered on a previous slide. Um, here we have the mean standard deviation and standard error that we got from the data we had, and we'll use this to, in our uh, in our report to calculate the confidence interval, and the ANOVA test. So this is our table for our ANOVA summary for um, each different ball with the 10 trials each. And this is the p-value that we got for the one-way ANOVA test. And then here is a graph showing the standard, uh, the mean distance each ball traveled plus or minus their standard deviation for each brand of the ping pong balls. From the table of the results, um, there seems to be a relationship between ping pong brand and distance traveled. We can conclude this because of our NOVA test, our p-value was 1 times 10 to the negative 4th, which is smaller than our um, alpha, which is 0 0.05. We reject the null hypothesis and accept our alternate. So some objective and recommendations, um, brand performance recorded um, using distance traveled and in the future, we should probably use a trigger-based apparatus in order to decrease human error and increase consistency, create a more sturdy device to limit friction inside the ball to minimize the Magnus effect, and test the weight of the balls and take into consideration the levels of ball, the level the balls are sold at. So um, the, con the results were semi-inconsistent due to the pulling of the spring and the apparatus was mounted on a table. It was rather loose, so the force by the person pulling the spring caused it to move and shift minimally. Also, we recorded the distance traveled by viewing where it landed on the ground, and we had three people look at it. In the future, we could probably use a camera in order to minimize human error. 
That's it.